Glory to God. Amen. First, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all mothers all right. everywhere. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's truly a blessing to be a mother. Amen. Amen. It is truly a blessing to be a mother. Yes, yes. And I want to say that I thank God for all mothers. Yes, yes. Being a mother is a job. Yes, yes, it is. It's hard, but it's a blessing. Yes, it and is. And I thank God for the mother that I am. All right. And I thank God for blessing me with my children. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody that call me mother, I thank God for my son-in-law. I just thank God for all mothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank God for my mother. Amen. I thank God for my grandmother. I thank God for spiritual mothers. It's truly a blessing for mothers. And to be a mother... It's a lot. Because I can say a lot about being a mother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this morning I woke up so emotional. Mm -hmm. Because some people don't have a mother. Mm -hmm. And we we here that's still here have our mothers yeah. still yeah. living. Yeah. And so we should take that for granted. Come on. Because you only get one mother. Come on. Come on. Your auntie can't be your mother. Right. Your grandmother, she can be your mother, right. but she didn't carry you. Okay. And okay. she didn't bear the pain that your mother did. Okay. All right. You know, a lot of people think that being a mother is an easy job. Come on, come on. It's a lot mm. to be a mother. Mm. A man can't be a mother. Come on. And some people may feel like I'm stepping on their toes, but I'm just speaking what the Holy Spirit gave me to speak. Yeah. But God did not put it out there for a man and another man to try to be a mother right. to a child. All right. All right. That's of the devil. Yeah. yeah. God did create man to lay with man. To think that they're gonna have a baby together on, to raise on. that child up, that child gonna be confused. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't understand it. Yeah, come on, come on. Another woman can't lay with another woman to become a mother. My God, my God. That's not of God. Come on, man. Come on, man. You can't go and get pregnant for a man. To raise their baby with another woman. That's not a God. Everybody can say they're a mother, but everybody is not a mother. Because a real mother is going to do what she needs to do to take care of her children. A real mother is going to take care of the responsibilities of being there for her her children. No matter if she eat or not, she gonna make sure her children. A mother is gonna do everything that she know possible within the will of God to take care of her children or her child. A mother is not gonna put a man before her children. Thank God for the men because God created them first for the woman. And it's through his, through the man that the woman creates the baby. But we have to be mindful when we carry that title, mother. Because we got a lot of mothers out there that abandon their children. We can't do that. Because as Apostle said in Sunday school, children are a blessing to God. And so we can't take that word mother lightly. Because 
because mothers have a big responsibility. We have to love our children unconditionally like God loved Jesus Christ because he gave his only begotten son for us. And so therefore we have to love our children like God loves us unconditionally. There's a lot of hurt mothers out there today. And a lot of them feel like they haven't done as much as they could because their children are straight. But if you're a praying mother, even though that child strayed away, that child gonna come back. But you have to be a praying mother in order for that child to know when it's time to come back. Because we all been there. We all astray and left home. But we had to come back. Just like the prodigal son did. He bounced his way back home. So we have to, you know, do the best that we can as mothers. You know. We can't go party in and neglect our children. Leave our home, our home with our children there by themselves. Or leaving somebody that's younger to tend to our children. We can't do that. You know, we have to be there for our children. My daughter is grown, married. She has her own child. She's about to have another child. You know, and I thank God that she's married. And that she have my son-in-law, her husband. She don't have to come to run to mama and tell mama everything that's going on because it's not my business. You know, but in spite of her, she's still my daughter and I, I love her, I have to pray for her, you know. And I know she, she having a, a good life and I, and I thank God for that, you know. Apostle take care of her. He does a, a wonderful job and I commend him for that, you know. My other daughter, she's, you know, she's living her life. My sons, I, I pray for them. You know, they not, all of them are not at home, but I, I pray for them because that's what mothers do. We pray for our children. We have to listen to them if they come to us. You know, have to give them advice. You know, spiritual advice. You know, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit on what to help our children with. You know, and so I, I just thank God for all mothers. Again, I, I just can't say it enough because the mothers are truly a blessing. And, and my heart goes out to all these mothers that have lost their children. But if they died in Christ, they will see them again. They won't be their sons or daughters anymore because we are all be sisters and brothers in Christ. But if they child knew Jesus and they were saved, they'll see them again. But I just pray for all the hurting mothers that going through hurt today because they feel like they can't make it through this day because their child is not here. But just thank God that you're still here. That's the blessing part about it. You're still here. Thank God if your mother's still living. Still thank God even if your mother's still not living. You know, because your mother did what she could. She did the best that she could. So just thank God. No matter what, thank God. So I, I pondered all week about I said, oh, I was telling my daughter Tuesday night, I said, oh, I got Mother's Day inspiration. And all this week I was trying to figure out what to do. Last night I was trying to write down stuff. But before that, I even, I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, let your will be done. Give me the words to speak. Lead me to speak because I don't want to say the wrong thing. You know, and even Tuesday, I was like, the Lord was downloading stuff in my spirit. And I was like, people 
might not like me after this message, but it's okay. It's okay because whatever the Holy Spirit allowed me to speak, I'm going to speak it. And I, I just thank God, you know, that he allowed me to do what he asked me to do. But again, don't take being a mother lightly. You have to love your children. You have to love them. You can't abuse them because you're going to have an answer to that. You can't call yourself all these type of names because that's not what you are. You're a mother. All these women, some of them, I'm a bad, you know what, I can't say. But you, you're not all of that. You're supposed to have more respect for yourself as a mother. Especially if you have daughters. Our daughters look up to us. So we have to be positive role models to our daughters. And not only to our daughters, but to our sons too. So I don't want to take up too much more time because the pastor going to bring the word. But if you're a mother, I want you to think on that. And know that it is truly a blessing to be a mother. And thank God that he allowed you to be a mother. And we're going to continue to pray for those mothers that's going through. Because we all have a situation or something that we're going through as a mother. But we don't stop. We keep pushing. So again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And I'm going to pass the baton. Amen. 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 Before Apostle comes before us, hallelujah. I just want to add just a scripture to that. And it's coming from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the first through the third verse. And it's very important because although today is Mother's Day, mm -hmm. here's a message for the children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Amen. For this is right. Is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That, thou, that it may be well with thee, Amen. and thou mayest live long on the earth. Amen. And I'm just going to say to that, you can't be a mother without raising a child. Right. And that's whether it's a child from your loins or a child from another mother that have blessed you to raise that child. We have Mother Pat here in the house. Hallelujah. And we just want to give honor to Mother Pat. She's not just the mother to the sons that she bore, but she's mother to other children and of this house. We are blessed and we are honored to have Mother Pat. Hallelujah. So children, Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3, I'm giving you an assignment. I want you guys to go home and read that scripture. Read those verses and let it be a part of your life. Amen. Because what's important is what the word of God says. Amen. He says children, and we're all children because we have Father God and we need to be obedient to him. Hallelujah. 
But as I say, it's written in the word of God. Amen. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Amen. If you want long life here on this earth, obey your parents. You may not agree with what they say. But because the word of God says, whoo, hallelujah, obey your parents. I give God the praise that my mom is still living, hallelujah, hallelujah, she's 84 years young, hallelujah. And so what I'm saying to you children is this. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. You see, God gave you parents for a reason. He know we couldn't raise ourselves. He know a lot of times we don't know what we supposed to do, and we need guidance. So he gave us earthly parents. And I give God the praise for that because I stood here and said earlier, God loves mothers. We are dear to God's heart. And I'm not saying he don't love the fathers. But the mothers, we go that extra mile for our children. Even when they want to go astray. So I just want to say, to God be the glory. Amen. And Mother Pat, we honor you Amen. for being the mother of this house. Amen. 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 Come on, give them a hand. Come on, give all the mothers a hand. All right. Today. Thank God for those two great inspirational messages. Thank God for them today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And this is the day that the Lord has touched whoever started it on the calendar and made it a worldwide day Amen. celebration Amen. called Mother's Day. Yeah. Yeah. It's not enough just to celebrate mothers on a day like today. Yes. Yes. But what a good day to celebrate Mother's Day in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Versus celebrating mothers right at the cemetery. It's good when your mother is alive. Yes, yes. And you can call. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing when you have a mother mm -hmm. that you can go and see. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. It's even a good thing that if you have a mother, rather, she be from the streets. Mm -hmm. Or she be from out of a well-groomed home that she is yet involved in your life at some point. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on, man. And sometimes people don't understand what a mother has to go through uh -huh. in order to come into the likeness and the character of who she is mm -hmm. as a mother. And I'm going to call your attention to Proverbs 31. Come on. We're going to not ask the same question that everybody else is asked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're going to look at a particular verse mm -hmm. because this not only deals with a virtuous woman, Come on. but this deals with a wife 
a mother, a virtuous woman, mm -hmm. and then it separates her character from all of the other women. Proverbs 31, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy, and to hear this very clearly, this is the prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, it's very ironic that you find people saying what women are not allowed to do. Come out. Come out. And they say women are not allowed to teach. <laughs> they say women are not allowed to preach. Uh -huh. And they say women are not allowed to give anything that pertains unto a word from God mm -hmm. to a man. But the Bible plainly and clearly states that when you teach someone something, that means you have to give them instructions. Okay, okay. And she taught him a prophecy. Prophecy don't come from human intellect. Come on now. Prophecy comes from the Most High. Yeah, yeah. And if you notice in verse 2, the first thing that this particular mother, and I will let you know who she is. This particular mother here is Queen Bathsheba. Queen Bathsheba, the one who messed around with King David. The mother who had to endure being impregnated by the king. And had to withstand all of the ridicule because her husband Uriah was killed and she was known as an adulteress uh -huh. and the kingdom talked about her. You better know that they didn't want to receive her as a queen yeah, yeah, yeah. when they heard that she was pregnant and with child. They called her all kind of mothers that wasn't like the word mother alone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, y'all know those words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. They called her a homewrecker. Yeah. They said that she was a harlot. Uh -huh. yeah. They called her promiscuous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They dogged her out. Yeah. They defamed her character. Depreciated her name. But it didn't stop God Come on, man. from giving her a prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She had to endure hardship. Uh -huh. Bathsheba had to go through so much. Even had to sit to a side and still be the queen while her husband was out playing adultery any games. My God, my God, my while he was still being who he was that he had always been. She said, and this is Bathsheba behind the scenes. I can see her saying, I thank God for my life lessons. But I do believe and thank God for all of my blessings. Because out of life she was taught a lesson. She was taught how it feels to fall in love with someone, bear them a child, and then the child end up getting murdered by God himself. Only to stick with the man and watch God turn this thing around and let it work for her good. All right, all right. Thank this is the kind of mother that you will yeah, want to look up yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Not the kind of mother that just have a child and the child don't make it and then she go on a horse free. But the kind of mother that says, God, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. The kind of mother that can sit there and say, the Lord can give me a child. 
And the Lord can take that same child away, but I'm still going to bless his name. That's the kind of mother you need to look up to. She is this very Proverbs 31 woman we're about to talk about. She goes on and she says to her son Lemuel, which was Solomon's nickname that she gave him. And Solomon had other nicknames as well. He had another nickname by the name of Jediah. Jediah was a name that David the king, his father, gave him when he was growing up. Uh -huh. And his mother called him Lemuel. Come on, come on. So she says, I want you, son, to come here and let me sit down and teach you about this prophecy. Yeah. The reason why she called him into her bedroom to talk to him or into the king's courts to talk to him uh -huh. was because she recognized that there was something going on with him. Yeah. Yeah. And she looked at him and said, what, my son? My, my. That lets me know this mother was in tune with the feelings and the emotion of her child. Okay. Yeah. In spite of how old you get, young people, Come out. and us older people, Come out. for us who have parents that are alive, they will always be in tune Come with out. what we go through. Come on, Come on. A real mother does not throw her child away. A real mother does not shove off her responsibilities on somebody else. And a real mother would never look at another mother. Rather, she be foster mother or stepmother or she just be a fraternal mother or she's just a legal guardian over that child and say, you are a better mother than I am. A real true mother is going to say, those are my responsibilities. Yeah, 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 yeah. I made them and I have to take care of them. Yeah. And a real mother is going to really be discreet about how she brings people in and out of her life yeah. when it has a lot to do with her children's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A real mother. So she says, what my son? And what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. She goes to tell him, she says, give not thy strength unto women. Notice she didn't say don't give your strength to a woman or to a wife. But what she is doing is she's telling Solomon and she's saying, I don't want you to be like your daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had to sit here and be the queen of the castle. But I came second and third and fourth and fifth and 5,001 to all of the other women that your daddy brought around. Come on, come on. Yet these women wanted to take my place, but they couldn't run the kingdom. Oh, my, 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 my. She knew she was a mother. And she knew one thing about being a mother is that she had to handle a mother responsibility. Uh -huh. And not only was she a mother, but Deacon West, this is what separated her from the other women. She recognized she's not just a mother, first lady, but she's also a queen. Uh, some of you mothers going to have to get out of just being mother and learn that you are a queen. So even when the king is not home taking care of the kingdom, it's your job as the queen to make sure the palace still gets ran the way that it should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She realizes her mistakes that she made in life. And thank God for a woman like Bathsheba. Thank God for a woman who had no control over the king summoning her. Couldn't tell the king no if she wanted to. Because if she refused the king, he can do and say what he want and it will be done. And yet she just fell and went with it. But look at what happened on the good side. Uh -huh. Because what started out as a tragedy actually turned into a terrific moment in her life. Because although this mother was a mother to Solomon, she also was a mother to the stepsons that David had. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the other brothers, they came to her as well. Don't fool yourself. Yeah. She didn't just teach Solomon. She taught 
all of the other brothers, such as Absalom. And she taught uh, Abinadab. She taught the rest of the brothers. And now here is baby boy Solomon. And she's saying to him, come and let me teach you some things. Yeah. The first thing I don't need you doing is going out there, spending your time with Rodia's living and with these uh -huh. promiscuous women. Uh -huh. Don't get out there and give your sex away uh -huh. and give your body away. Matter of fact, this is how she's saying it for us in the 21st century going into the 22nd century. She's saying don't just put notches under your belt and don't lay with nobody if you don't intend on marrying that body. That's what she's saying. That's why she said, listen, I had to endure you doing things with your, I had to endure you doing things and going through things, growing up, getting to know yourself. But before you get out here and try to experiment, son, I don't want you to be without excuse. Right. Now, that's a big mother. A mother that says, I'm not here to control your life. Yeah. But I want to put some instructions in your path uh -huh. so that if you heed to my instruction, you will do well. Yeah. But if you don't listen to what I have to say and think that my instructions are just mere words, you will have to reap what you sow. Right. In other All words, right. this is what she's saying. All don't right. give your strength unto uh -huh. the women, yeah. nor uh -huh. your ways to that which destroy kings. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to live with your daddy. Let me, can I just go in Bathsheba's uh -huh. life? Uh -huh. Can I just go into her life behind the scenes? Uh -huh. She had to deal with the fact that David had gotten another woman pregnant uh -huh. that was a concubine. Uh -huh. He come home, he stressed out. Oh, yes, amen. amen. And she looking at him saying, what is it, my Lord? What is troubling you? Uh -huh. And he don't want to tell her, I messed up again. Uh -huh. But because she knows her husband, yeah, yeah. she knew what she had before she said, I do. Uh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, she was still willing to put up with his mess uh, because she recognized that this kingdom is bigger than just David. Uh, I had got a word from God and God told me that my son Solomon is going to be the next to reign so I can't get out of pocket if God gave me a promise. Uh, I feel like preaching right there. You as a mother better understand that when God gives you a promise about your child, then you better not waver to the right nor to the left. You better stay straight. And some women, uh, you are in the things that you are in because of the promise God gave you. Come on here. Some of you mothers don't put up with some real fire just because of the promise God gave you. Uh-huh. And some mothers, you are putting up with some unnecessary fire and God didn't give you no promise. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna mess with that too much, but I'm gonna help you here. She said, don't you give your ways to that which destroy kings because I saw how your daddy came in many nights. I seen how your daddy would tell me and send word to me that he would be home later, but he don't know when, but I had to endure. I had to endure the fact that, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I had to endure the fact that my husband, David, who is the king over 12 providence, and he is the king over Israel, and now he's uh, the king in Jerusalem, and he's the king of Judah. He's the king over these kingdoms, and yet I got to deal with all of the concubines that's coming into the palace. I I got to make up a bit for them. I got to be a maid servant to them. I got to be a, a, a friend to them. Even when I don't want to friend them, I got to just be all of this while folks are still scandalizing my name. She said, I thought by now that somebody will see that there is a virtuous side to my life. Uh, the Bible never would have put it here if Bathsheba was not a virtuous woman. Uh, you can call her a whore if you want to but that whore was virtuous uh, she was pure she was so pure that she didn't let what she went 
through, stop her from coming through. And some of you mothers in here, you ought to stop looking like what you're going through and start looking better than what you're going through. You ought to tell the devil that you can't mess up my life because I'm going to hold on to my promise. Uh, I got to teach my children. I got to instruct my kids. Uh, I'm invested in the kingdom, but I invested in my man. And I ain't let nobody fool me out of my blessing because it's the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow with it. Uh, don't you let nobody take your strength from you. Don't you give your ways to the way that destroys kings. Uh, it is not for kings, O Lemieux. It is not for kings to drink wine. Uh, look at the instructions that she's doing. She's teaching Solomon how it is to be a high priest uh, because she didn't just want Solomon to be a priest. Mm. She wanted Solomon to be a high priest. Oh, baby, matter of fact, this is what every mother's desire should be. I don't want my children just going to elementary, moving from elementary to middle school, coming out of middle school, going to high school, and then you drop out in the 12th grade when I myself dropped out in the ninth. No, I'm going to stay on your tail and make you finish high school, and I'm going to do all I can to push you to going to college or going to a vocational school or something to get you some better education so you won't have to struggle like mama had to struggle. Uh, and if, if she's anything of a real mother, while her kids are going through school, she will see the light that she's putting in them and let it work for her and she will get up and go back to school off the inspiration that her children have brought to her because I don't need my children having a higher education than me and then I can't talk to them on the level of their own because I choose to stop. The devil is alive. You never too old as a mother to go back to school and finish what you started. Uh, because if the truth be told, some mothers, uh, they dropped out of school because they had to take care of their siblings. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, some mothers had to quit school because they got pregnant at an early age and big mama, that's what her name was, she said, I'm not raising no bastard. Uh, I ain't raising your child. You had them, you take care of them. But now we in a different disposition of times. Uh, you got 15 year olds who want to be a mother and don't have a clue of what it is to even know what a mother goes through. Uh, you think it's just something bright to just spread up and get a baby? Oh, it looks good to carry the pouch, but baby, just wait till the troubles come. Oh, real troubles knock at your door when you got to get up with that child in the middle of the night. When you got to give that child some earwax because they got an ear infection. When you got to get up and take care of that child because that child done caught the collins or that child got eczema or that child won't stop crying. They just an infant and they can't talk to you and tell you what's wrong. You done fed them. You done changed them but they still hollering like they crazy. Oh, and if you're not careful to raise a child the way a child should be raised because you're a child and you didn't get raised right. Oh, you'll shake your baby to death. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up here. Oh, you will shake that baby or scream that child or do like some of these other folks do. Put that child in a bag. Throw it in a dumpster because you're tired of hearing it cry. Oh, nobody told you oh, what all comes with raising a child. Oh, do anybody hear what I'm saying? They didn't tell you what all comes with raising a child. Uh, don't you let no guy get you wet behind your ear uh, until you lose your mind. Uh, baby, let me help you understand something. Uh, real mothers like to wait till they get married before they decide to want to have a baby. Uh, why you say a real mother? Because a real mother knows that before I become a mother, uh, I want to at least go ahead and get everything I need to get out of the way. Uh, but sometimes life just don't throw us that type of day. Sometimes you got to roll with the deck that you've been built. Uh, sometimes in life, 
You just got to roll with the punches. And don't you let nobody judge you on where you are right now because of some of the decisions you had to make or why you had to be a mama. I know you did not want to go and take out of your mouth and put it in your child's mouth. I know you didn't want to tell that man, oh, baby, we ain't got it today. But really, you had it, but you really only had it for you and your children. I know you didn't want to take a licking and keep on taking just so you can do what you need to do as a mother. But life can sometimes throw you some things that you don't have no control over. But the best part about life is that there is a God who say, if you come unto me with your labor, bring me all of your mess, bring me all of your struggles, bring me all of your pain and burdens, and just trust me, I guarantee you, it won't be easy, but it'll be worth it in the long run, because I will bring you through, oh, I will bring you through, uh, Bathsheba, Bathsheba, man, somebody shout Bathsheba, Bathsheba is the kind of woman that says, uh, my life alone is a testimony that you can look at, uh, this is what she says in verse 5, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Uh, in other words, when kings get drunk, she said, I watched how your daddy made bad decisions and he overlooked the ones that was in need. He overlooked the ones that needed something. Uh -huh. You know, then she goes and says, many a times I had to serve your daddy in his company uh, just so that they can have what they need to have. But don't get it twisted. I did not choose to do this. I had to do this because it was my duty. Uh, am I talking to any mother in here that you don't want to entertain some of the things that your husband or some of the things you have to do in life? But because you are that kind of a mother, you don't mind standing on the front line. Come on, talk to me. Uh, you might be that kind of mother who don't mind going to court behind your child. But you're going to look at your child and say, tell me the truth. Did you do it or did you not? Because if I'm going to put my house up as collateral, then you better be innocent. Because I don't want you taking from me and causing me to lose what I worked hard. Y'all ain't going to talk. I need to close it. Y'all ain't gonna have, have a church with me. I see. Uh, 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 you know, you got mothers every day, uh, and they put their life on hold just so their children can go on in life. But my God, uh, you got some ungrateful, good for nothing children uh, that you can have as a mother, and they can leave you with that question what did I go wrong when it came down to raising you? Where did I go wrong? Oh, you got some mothers. They are good mothers. And the people don't like those kind of mothers. Oh, children don't like them kind of mamas. No, you want that mama who don't care for you. You want that mama that's going to pull you by your hair. Be mad because oh, she can't live her life through you. Call you out your name. That's the kind of mother you want. Because you think that's love. The devil is a liar. When a mother loves her child, she don't go and call her child one of the most horrific names it is in the world. When a mother loves her child, she will not dog out her children under no circumstances. When a mother loves her child, she will put herself last and her hair will not come first. While her children laying in the house hungry and ain't got Y'all, I'm gonna preach it here in a minute. When a mother loves her child, uh, she won't let another man tell her to put your child out. The devil is a lot here. You can come and go, but the one I had is mine. And it's my job to be there for mine. Uh, you ought to have five somebody and say, well, I need a mother in my life. I need that kind of mother, that mother that'll stay there with me. Whether I'm good or I'm not. That mother that won't just come to the 
hospital and look at my baby and then put my responsibilities on somebody else. But a real mama, a real mama will not let CPS take her children. Y'all are going to talk to me up in here, but I feel like preaching here. A real mama is not just going to let DCS walk in and let the sheriff's department just put your baby on a pavement and just walk away with them looking like they ain't getting nothing. The devil lives alive. I got to take the whole city to court. The whole state to court behind my baby. A real mama gonna stand up for hers. A real mama gonna ride or die for hers. A real mama. Somebody shout a real mama. To the real mama, real mama gonna look and say to that husband, huh? Oh, babe, I know you might be mad at my child. Huh? Rather they got the same child together or not. But they'll say, baby, I know you might be mad, but God didn't put it in you to have the heart like I got. Huh? And a real mama gonna go after they baby. Huh? Oh, a real mama is not just going to watch their children. Huh? Oh, just lay up with other children. Huh? And then turn around and lay up with other children. Huh? Without making a stop to it and saying, look, baby, I'm noticing something about you. Every time I give you a little leeway, you try to run a mile. I'm shutting this jump down. I'm shutting it down because I got to protect you. My job is to protect you. I see you smiling right now. But, baby, I done seen three, four, five different people in your life. And it ain't been number six to eight months. No, I'm shutting it down. What you mean? You ain't going nowhere today. You ain't getting out this house today. You can go to your social media and talk about me if you want to. But I guarantee you there is somebody out there that's willing to switch places with you. There's somebody out there that say you don't want that kind of mama. Well, I wish to God I had that kind of mama. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, real mama. Oh, somebody say a real mama. A real mother is not going to sit up here and just, oh, please sit down. But a real mother ain't going to sit up here and just let anything go on in her life. Oh, I'm getting ready to get a little heavy here with you. But a real mama is going to listen to her child when they cry out. Oh, honey, they're going to listen to them when they cry out. They're not going to put them on the back burner. Oh, they're not going to go and throw them off on the other person. Uh -huh. and they, a real, oh uh, my God, say it, I'm going to say it, thank you Jesus, uh, but a real mama is not going to play comparison uh, with the next woman, come on here, oh uh, God Almighty, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, I'm not in competition with another mother, uh, you can be a stepmama and I'm the biological mama, uh, but we're not going to fight over no child, baby, uh, we're going to come together and get alone, uh, so that they can have the best of both worlds, uh, Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. A real mama ain't going to feel like she got to compete to win that child's heart. Because if you want to get out there on them streets, then let me sit you down and talk to you. And let you know what the streets ain't got to offer. A real mama going to instruct their child. And they going to tell their child the truth. They're not going to let their child get on their last nerve and be and tell them, get out. The devil is alive. No, you want to hear, get out. I'm telling you now, don't go nowhere. Oh, Cause a real mother ain't gonna put you out there because there's wolves out there and she closed it. You can call me crazy if you want to. Uh, but real mothers, uh, they're outlasting some of these young mothers. Uh, look at the status now. We got 20-some-year-old mothers. Uh, they are being found dead in the car. And their babies is being found dead in a lake somewhere. Uh, don't you see what's going on? Uh, because the minute they get pregnant, they think you can't tell me what to do. Uh, I'm a mama just like you was a mama. And you can't tell me what to do. Well, baby, it's more than just having a pudgy in your stomach and walking with your legs gapped open. Huh? Going to doctor's appointments. Huh? Baby, that ain't when the trouble started. Huh? The trouble started when there ain't no daddy there to help you raise what you made. Huh? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? The trouble starts huh? not when they born, huh? but the trouble starts huh? when you ain't got no help. Huh? And there is no assistance that will help you. Huh? There Start the day that you got to push a scroll 
counselor and go to the doctor's appointments and wake appointments all by yourself. The troubles start and for you mothers who have your husbands to help you, then you ought to not turn your nose up at some young person, at some mother that don't have no man in her life to help you. You ought to get off your holy holy self and help them. Because it's not her fault alone. Somebody helped her to get to where she is. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Do you hear what the Holy Ghost have to say here? Uh, I'm going to make trouble with the devil. Uh, in verse 6, and she says, Give strong drink unto them, unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Uh, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Uh, open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Uh, open thy mouth. That's what she's telling him again. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. This is what Bathsheba is telling Solomon. I want you to look out for those that are poor and that's in need. Uh, how did we get so far off track? How did the mothers of these years uh, change into the mother of the, the these years here? Uh, how did they change from what they were supposed to be to what they are not supposed to be? Uh -huh. You got to understand, I'm getting ready to hurt your feelings, but I love you. I'm going to cut you, but I'm going to stitch you up out there. Uh, when you mothers understand that it's more to life than just fake eyelashes and weave and nails and clothes. When you understand that it's more to life than just that, then you will understand the value of what it is to be a real mother. Because some mothers don't feel like a mother if they are not standing side by side with their daughters, rocking what their daughters are rocking. Mama, you're not supposed to be on my generational time. You're supposed to be ahead of my time. But I need for you to stay relevant for a world that's full of irrelevance, if that makes sense. Uh, mama, I need you to stay with the times, but don't try to beat my time. Do that make sense? Because uh, why? I need somebody I can come to and talk to. I don't want to just look up to the first lady of the church only. I need to be able to go home and say, uh, if I can't get in contact with my first lady, I can definitely get in contact with my mother, who's the same type of woman of God. But we got so many mothers that are off course these days. They think being a mother is just having children. They think being a mother is just simply uh, having children, giving birth to children, and then turning around and slanging them for 1500 on taxes. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, they think being a mother is it, 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 it's just, it just, it's just something that's just good to be. I, I, I'm a mother. I, 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 I'm pregnant and, and, and I, uh, uh, I'm having my third one. And, and, and watch this. The church going to have to get out of this right here. We got to get out of giving celebration over to young, single, unmarried, young people, older people who get pregnant right under our nose and then get the praising God in the house of God like it's something to be proud of. I know y'all ain't gonna like apostle, but I'm a troublemaker. Uh-huh. Why you say that? It's because if we don't start teaching our younger women, and I'm talking to you age mothers, uh, how to be chasing, uh, then guess what? We don't have a whole baby booming church full of bunch of unborn again believers trying to get them born again and it's a struggle when you marry and you're trying to get somebody who's not married to see that the best way to do this is to be married and then go have your family come on here somebody it's a struggle for the church Bathsheba said listen to Miss Solomon that was a struggle for me as your mother I struggled I struggled I struggled I struggled she said but one thing I can tell you is that 
God made me virtuous in all of my struggles. You as mothers, I'm closing. You as mothers got to understand that when it's time for you to be virtuous, being virtuous don't come to you just because you look and you say you're a Proverbs 31 woman. That don't make you a virtuous woman. I'm sorry. Being virtuous takes a lot because you got to put out a lot. Uh -huh. You got to put out a lot and notice being virtuous, you cannot be single and be a virtuous woman. Somebody say, say that again. You cannot be single and be a virtuous woman. You must be married to be a virtuous woman. I'm somebody shout out, prove it. Here we go. Let's look at verse 10. Verse 10 opens up the question and it said, who can find a virtuous woman? Ain't that what your Bible says? It says, for her price is far above rubies. Here's the virtuous woman in verse 11. The heart of her, say, I, I need everybody with their Bibles. The heart of her, the heart of her wife. Her boyfriend. T-Bird, that's just my baby daddy. Her baby daddy. Insecure, and what are you not doing that got him so insecure? 
insecure. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh -huh. That's why I don't want no married woman or no single woman going home telling nobody that you talk to or married to about me. Uh, keep your mouth closed after you leave the house of God. If you had a Holy Ghost time, just say the Holy Ghost showed up. And then when they say, well, who brought the word? Just tell them the truth. The Holy Ghost brought the word. Uh, because by the time he meets me, he already pre-elect me and got some kind of problem with me. But I ain't my fault because God made me the man who I am and you not the man who you should be. The devil is a liar. Why don't you get in God's presence and tear it before God and wait on God so he can make you to be the person you need to be. That way you won't try to judge me and lie and say what I want to show us when I got mine. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And mine's is just as virtuous as yours. And if you get that out of you, me, you can walk hand in hand, side by side, like me and Sherlock. And you can love your virtuous woman and I can continue to love mine too. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Uh, you got to understand that she's talking and now uh, I thank God for my mama because when my mama was alive, uh, I didn't really want to listen to her, but I heard what she was saying, and that's a difference right there. Sometimes sons, we don't want to listen to mama, but we hear what you're saying. Amen. Mama told me, she said, Look, son, uh, I need you to stop messing around with all them different women, boy. I, I, I heard you, mama, but uh, I ain't trying to listen to that right now. Because, you know, I'm trying to find you. <laughs> and, and mama had to tell me one day, she said, listen, the biggest problem is you trying to find a woman like your mama when you don't even know what kind of woman your mama used to be. She said, so when you find out what type of woman that I used to be and the woman that I am today, then you'll understand why you need not to look for no woman like me. You just need to get on your business and handle your business and the woman like me will find you. God will put y'all in each other's path. But she say, son, you got to grow up because even your daddy don't deserve a woman like me, but he got me. I said, well, mama, wait a minute. What you mean if, if he don't deserve you, then why he with you? She said, I'm, uh, it's not that he with me. I'm with him because of what God said. She said, because if God didn't tell me to marry him, then guess what? Y'all would still be bastards and considered unholy. But because I married him, that made you sanctified and cleansed. Yeah. I said, wait a minute. What you talking about, mama? She said, son, I'm telling you right now that it ain't got nothing to do with your daddy. This is bigger than your daddy. This was about the promise God gave me. Yeah. And God told me that I was going to marry and, and who I was going to marry. And when he come, that's what my husband. And when I saw your daddy, he just happened to be the one that God said. So with all of his good, his bad, his ugly, his hang-ups, and his downfalls, and she said, that was my husband because God said it. I'm here to tell you right now, don't you let go of what God told you as a promise because he looks bad. Baby, you hold on to it until God work it out and make you to be the mother you need to be. I'm getting ready to close now for the last time. The Bible lets us know, and I won't be able to preach all of this. But the Bible lets us know that concerning this virtuous woman, huh, this mother that you need to be as a mother today, women, the Bible lets us know that she will do her husband good huh, and not evil all the days of her life. Uh, some men don't recognize when they got a good mother in their life. I need to say that again. Some men don't recognize when they got a good mother in their life. Some men don't recognize because they still want to hold down the mother as a baby mama. But if you look at me as a baby mama, then you're going to miss the mother that's inside of me. Because I'm more than just your baby's mother. Uh, I'm your children's mother and I'm raising them. Uh, because the truth be told, uh, some women, and I don't blame you for the one that can shout and say, I thank God that I got all my kids by just one man. Uh, but the woman who got four, five different baby daddies and four, five different men in their life uh -huh, and probably pregnant with the number six uh, can still say, you know what? The God that loves you is the God that loves me too. And the God that didn't give up on you is the God who have not given up on me. Uh, you might not come from whatever walk of life some other woman come from but you both got a story to tell uh, you might have grew up 
up in the suburbs with a good living, huh? and they might have grew up in the country among hogs and swine. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. But that don't mean that just because you grew up in the suburbs that you are a better mother and a better fit huh, than the one who come out the country. Huh? No, because the one who comes from the country huh, can teach you city strip or something about a struggle. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? The one that comes through the country huh, that know how to get out there and milk that cow huh, and harvest that bull huh, and wrestle that hog huh, and make bacon. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? It's still a good mother. Huh? That same mother, can I preach like it is? Huh? That same mother that knows how to roll up her pants leg huh, and step foot in a wash tub huh, and scrub huh, her children clothes huh, on a washboard huh, and her knuckles ain't even bleeding. Huh, it's the, still the same kind of mother that you are today even though you can go to your house, huh, take your dirty clothes, huh, put them in your whirlpool, huh, that's your wash machine, huh, press a button, huh, she's still that good mother, huh, just like you that good mother. Huh. You better high five somebody and say neighbor. Huh. Tell them say I'm that good mother. Huh. Tell them because there are some bad mothers. There are some mothers huh, that when they get the looking and feeling, huh, when they need that crystal meth, huh, when they get the feeling for that crack, huh, when they get the feeling for them pills, huh, they get the feeling for them drugs, huh, they get the feeling for an alcohol, huh, they get the feeling for sex. Huh. Oh God, there are some mothers out there huh, that when they urge get on, huh, they go and do what they urge say do. Huh. They don't care about leaving their children huh, home alone with strangers. They don't care about leaving their kids at home with some uncle and he's just as managed as they are. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Oh God, don't act like it don't happen. This is the 21st century, 2022 and it's still going on. Oh, where your children are saying, mommy, mommy, please don't leave because Chester got something up his sleeve. Oh, every time you leave me with him, he always goes Mama don't leave and the mama don't listen. That's not a good mother. It's not a good mother that you choose the club before your kids. You're not a good mother. You're not a good mother when you put a man before your child. You are not a good mother. You are not a good mother when you let the Department of Social Services come in and take your kids and you say y'all can have them. I don't care about them no way. And you refuse to get up and go to the meetings. You refuse to get up and go to the uh, the places you need to go to try to win them back. Oh, you're not a good mother. You're not a good mother when you sit up there and use your children as big to get to the man. No, 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 baby. You're not a good mother. You're not a good mother. And if you got the threat that man with child support because he won't help you take well, guess what? You open up. You gave birth. Well, you raise them. And if he don't want to raise them, you do what you got to do. That's right. Don't go open it up. Having another one. And get mad at the other man. You're not a good mother. You're not a good mother. When you look at one man and try to make that man your children's father. And you know you're lying through your teeth. You know you have but you're trying to mess over the one that's the good one huh? and say you the possible daddy huh? no the devil is a liar huh? you're not a good mother huh? oh but there are some good mothers huh? there are some good mothers huh? that are out here huh? that say come hell or high water huh? I'm sticking with my kids huh? there are some good mothers huh? some good mothers huh? that say I'd rather huh? go hungry huh? before I let my kids starve huh? There are some good mothers, some mothers out here that say I'll give my car up so my child can go to work. There are some good mothers, some mothers that say I'll go a mile if I got to go. I don't mind going through the storm and I don't mind going through the rain. I don't mind going through the struggle just so my kids can there's some good mothers that don't mind going exhausted 
exhausting all she had just so her children could have a good holiday. There are some good mothers, some good mothers that are smile with her children, but then go in the back room and cry out to God. There are some good mothers that don't mind carrying the load. There are some good mothers that don't mind carrying the load. That don't mind pushing the carts. That don't mind taking care of their family. Don't mind going down there to the government assistance office. That don't mind. They ain't got too much pride. What they can't stand before somebody and how I'll help. There are some good mothers. Some good mothers that are stick by their children's side. There are some good mothers. And y'all say, go a little deeper. But there are some good mothers that say, I'm not asking for no blood transfusion to come from somewhere else. I'm rolling up my sleeve and giving blood for my own child. There are some good mothers that won't leave their child on their deathbed and tell the doctor, just unplug them just for the sake of an insurance policy. But they'll say, doctor, I ain't going nowhere until you do everything you can do. I don't care if my Medicaid run out. I don't care if my insurance run out. You can pull it all you want, but that's my baby. And I ain't going to let my daughter nor my son die on my watch. You better do something, doctor. There are some good mothers, some good mothers that says, listen, whatever it is my child done, I'm willing to let my child reap the decisions, I mean reap the consequences behind the decisions. But I can tell you now, one thing you can't do to my child is get my child to confess to something they didn't do. There are some good mothers that don't mind going all the way through just so they child. And they're not going to put their responsibilities yeah. off on the man or on their grandma. Yeah. They're not going to say, go to your grandma's house. Yeah. Go somewhere, just get out of my face. Yeah. A good mother is concerned oh, yeah. about her children's well-being, oh, yes. their welfare, yes. you know. and definitely making sure they're well-surrounded. If you don't have that kind of love, it's never too late for you to start sowing seeds into your mother. Yeah, yeah. The problem with the church is we preach, we teach about good and bad mothers, but when they don't have such a good mother, we never give them any instructions on how to help mama become good. Yeah. Most young women grow up angry at their mom. and try their best to not be nothing like their mama and have to go through everything that their mama went through without even knowing that their mama had to go through it. All at the risk of trying their best not to be nothing like their mama. And just because you moved to another state don't make you better than your mama. Just because you go somewhere else and go a little higher don't make you better than your mama. One day mama's here, the next day mama can be gone. Because what good mamas don't do is they never tell their children when they're sick. It's hard for a child to find out when mama's sick. It's hard. When we found out our mama was sick, she was already approaching her last stages. And we asked the mama, why you ain't told us? She said, well, what I'm going to tell you first so you can feel sorry for me? I... She told us the truth. She said, I saw you through school. I raised you to the best of my ability. She can truly say, all her children, we have become grown. <laughs> Some of us thought out making dumb decisions. We had to pay for it. But in the end, we got ourselves together. We got ourselves together. 
We didn't let that casket, that funeral service, be the reason why we was over the casket lying, talking about, Mama, I'm going to get myself together. No. We gave her her flowers while she was yet alive. All of us, this is my view. Now, my sister, she might not view it like I view it, but I don't care. Amen. But my view is that we all were special to mama in that way mama wanted us to be. Yeah. Because when Keisha was unavailable because she had to work, Shirley had to work, Linda had to work, Walter had to work, Derek was available. It, 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 they might look at it and say, well, I gave the most money. I always was there. Ain't nobody care because now money is no need when it comes down to love. All right, man. All right. Because money can't buy love. It can buy you only temporary happiness. And all the money of the world in the world still didn't keep my mom alive. I don't hurt over the fact that my mom's gone. I thank God that she's gone and now she don't have to suffer with a suffering that she can't explain to us. And the reason why I can thank God that she's gone is because she's in a glorious place and she did what she was sent here to do. She raised us. Your mama raised me. If you're in this house, no matter what age you are, you have done something against your mama. Or you're holding something against your mama. Let today, this moment right now, be the reason why you made that decision to get it out your heart. All right. Get it out of your heart. Satan, and I said this in Sunday school, Satan has a seasonal attack right now on women. From 12 on up, women, that's all I'm seeing now. Murders of women, deaths of women, murders of children that are females, deaths of females, suicide, females, homicides, females, dying, 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 dying. Because the women are the ones drawing closer to God faster. Satan ain't concerned about these want to be thugs and punks out here. They want to be hardcore. Satan already got them stuck. When Father Day come, you men better get ready. Because I got a message from God already concerning what a real father is. Because these old rooty pools out here, they call themselves fathers. They not real fathers. They not real fathers. Buy them Jordans and you think that's daddy? But you don't stop to see. You in jail and you want them to come visit you and you think you daddy? Come on here. Real fathers make up their mind to stay out of prison for the sake of their children. Yeah. Real fathers make decisions on jobs and don't just walk off when they get an attitude because the supervisor asks them to go pick out the trash. Mm, yeah. Sorry, jokers. And I want us... To hear it. And I don't need these young women marrying or wanting to marry these type of sorry jokers. Come on, man. Say it, say it. Get you a man that you don't want to let go of. All right. Get you marry your husband that you would never get tired of being in his presence. All right. Where you don't never get sick of him. Yeah. Anytime. Mothers. Anytime you pull up in your yard from work, you spend 30 minutes to an hour sitting in your car, you ain't happy in your home. Say it again. Say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Mothers, anytime you pull up in your car and you sit in your car, in your yard, 30 minutes to an hour in your car, you ain't happy in your home.
Then I have. Me. Anytime. You got to get off work and bend cones before you come home. You don't want to be at home. There's no way a real husband is going to be at work if he do manual work in that day. I don't care if he work in a gym or a cafeteria or out there in the field or even in an office. You sweat at some point. You must be at some point. You've been away for eight to ten hours predicated on the track. You mean to tell me the first thing you want to do is still bend corners? You ain't happy. You sick of that woman. You just ain't got the nerve to tell her. That's why our children grow up not knowing what it is to be a mother and a real father. Because they see. I grew up seeing. I grew up seeing a lot. I grew up looking at my aunties like they was a good mother. And there was only a few of them that was really good mothers. One a whole bunch of them in there, you know, a lot of them women. All of them weren't good mothers. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Because they was married and had one man coming in the back door. That was Jody. When the husband went out the front door, that was. See you later, husband. That's not a good mother by the kids in the room. And Jody is being told to be made to believe that he's uncle. Come on here. Come on, come on now. Come on here. Where did that come from? Uncle Joe. Mm. Now who is that? That one I got, that Willie. Mm. Uncle Willie? Mm. Where did that come from? Mm. Uncle Willie, where you coming from? Mm. Then when you see Uncle Willie out there with his family. Mm. <gasps> Ooh. Uncle Willie don't even know you, y'all. Hey, hey, Uncle Willie. Well, uh, here, 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 yeah. Uh, who, who, who you who your mom? Who your mom? You got to explain that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just because you was an old school slut, don't get mad at the new school thoughts. My God, my God. My God. You were just slutting on my old school way. Man. My God. Messing with your journey come ladies. Right. You know that cock eye I do? Right. You couldn't see him cock eye because he brought you your Mary Jane. And drunk some Bacardi with you. Turn up is turn up. He licked, he, he Rick James you. <laughs> Made you feel the fight. New school young girls that's mothers get pregnant without even knowing. They got pregnant. Old school women, they knew when the man was shooting. You shouting me? I felt it. These things these days, they don't feel nothing. Cause ain't no walls there. Ain't nothing out of hope. They don't, ain't no, ain't no real feeling in what they doing. They just doing it. Three minutes gone, felt like two hours. Oh, oh, oh. I'm a mama. I, I'm gonna hide my pregnancy from my mama, but you a mama. No walls. No walls. Not nothing to keep them together. It's like water, splash king. They just dive it up. One man climb in, the other dude like, what's up, homie? I'm waiting on you, bro. Man, what you doing here? I've been here since last week. They don't know nothing about helping they self, purify they self, cleaning they self, cleansing they self, douching, none of this. All they want to be is just a mama. Baby get the fever, they don't even know what to do. Baby got an ear infection and hollering, and they throw the baby. Y'all know I ain't lying. 
Then you find grandmamas of 36 years old. Great grandmama just turned 51. What's wrong with this picture? Back then, big mama was 60. 50 to 60 years old before her daughter ever thought about it. Popping their legs open. And if she was popping them legs open, she was popping birth controls to make sure she keep herself from getting caught. And the mothers of that day and time talked to their daughters. The mothers weren't scared to check the men for coming around. Man, my grandmama told my daddy he was no good. And told my mama, that man ain't charming, but he ain't no good. My mom still wanted to mess with my daddy. Papa was a rolling stone. Still is a rolling stone. He don't believe he getting old. He said he's looking for another wife. I hope he's just ready to settle down for right. He do his right. Can't get mad if he move on. That's what that's what he's supposed to do. But God let him move on with a woman that'll help him stay get saved and stay saved. Right. A righteous woman. Yes. Whether she's a, a mother or not, not a mother. Right. Somebody. Before you want to make that decision to just be a mother, consider the consequences. Consider the struggles that this world already has yeah. that you are involved in. Come on, and ask yourself that question. Do you want to bring in a child into the world without a family? Come on. Or do you want that family and then bring that child into this world? Mm -hmm. I look at my son and I see the joy and the happiness that it brings him every day I walk through that door. Right. It's three minutes away from my job. Mm -hmm. If I take seven minutes to get home, my wife know to call me because that is not like me. It was 3.34 and I wasn't even at home. I was still in my car sleep Friday. I fell asleep in my own car under the air. And I heard the guy come out, hey! and I jumped up and I realized I need to go home and clock out. I <laughs> took a whole minute of their time. They've been out and with my time neither. <laughs> But I called my wife. No, I had told her soon. I said, baby, I feel asleep in the car. You know how many husbands don't do that? Feel like they don't owe their wife no kind of explanation. My wife was up cooking. She was cooking. Under the circumstances, she was cooking. And it was a beautiful thing. But I had to share with her. Cause I and my son, he ran up and he hugged her. He gets mad with her when they pull up and he don't see me. And he looks at me like I am the perfect gentleman in his eyes. So I remind myself every day that he gets a lot more than what my daughters don't get because of how life has its circumstances. But it's proven that when a child grows up in a home where the father is the biological father and that's the biological mother, that child has a better opportunity at life than a child who grows up in a home with step parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want my son to change the world. And I want our other child that's on the way. Thank God for another boy. Amen. If God don't want to see his servant, hop off the cliff. I told you deep what I'm going to do. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you on duo because I got an iPhone, so you got an Android. I'm going to call you on duo. I'm going to be standing at that bobbin. And I'm going to say, it's a girl. <laughs> I'm 
I'm, we're going to have to see if that scripture going to hold fast in my life. He's going to give his angels charge over me lest I deck my foot against a stone. Okay. Well, mama said girl, so. okay. I ain't, ain't no more of that. <laughs> Don't want no more of that. These girls changes the name. I need the name both and to keep going. Keep the legacy going. But the men need to know how to work. I can deal with my sons getting their feelings hurt. And I can minister to them. But them daughters, they don't want to tell you when they got their feelings hurt. They want to run out here and keep playing games like you don't see nothing. <laughs> girls break men, break fathers' hearts. Can't happen. Got one already that thought she was a tall boy. Now she thinks she's a man. Trying to keep her from staying into that foolishness. I'm praying for her, but she act like she won't hell to be her destination. Please don't. I'm trying to pray to her that God sent a deliverance. Because it is what it is when it comes down. And, and, and that's one thing I believe that my preaching and teaching ain't just for this church. Just like there's other lesbians and homosexuals out there. And there's pastors who got their children who are like that. I have one that's like that. These pastors might condone theirs, but I ain't condoning mine, and I sure ain't going to go along with it. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. And God said, I'd rather you be hot or cold than to be lukewarm, and I spew you out my mouth. God ain't spit me out for not telling mine the truth. And when you get to that age of accountability, that you have every right to change, and you don't change. Because it's not my fault that you are in that foolishness because right. you didn't come up growing up seeing daddy with nobody right. named Tom. Right. Right. Come on, man. You didn't see daddy hanging out with no man. Come on. Daddy looked for you a mother. Yeah. Right. That means that she was all woman. Right. And daddy wasn't taking it. He was getting it. Come on, help. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Right? Yes. Oh, my God. That's right. So ain't no need of you being confused. Behind your identity crisis and your gender. Now oh, you let the devil in. You probably got mad at all the different types of mothers. I was growing up trying to find the right mother for my daughter and she might got mad. I'm serious. This will help somebody. Because sometimes when we move from relationship to relationship, rather we love God or not. But it messes with our children. It messes with their identity. When they see a, a woman doing their father wrong and their daddy's girl, oh man, they hate women. But how do you hate something that you with? That's crazy. Man. The thing we hate the most, we run into the arms of it. That's crazy. But, you know, and if they see mama being done wrong by a man constantly, shoot. They want to go get the opposite and get the same sex. No, stop making your life, your mama life, your mama life, your life. So now I'm talking, mama, I know this. You can't seem to keep a man. You keep bringing all these other people around. Can you just give yourself some time? If mama get stay out of my business. Well, I can't help but to be in your business when you bring your business home. Because that's not just your business. That's our business. Because this our house. This our roof. Them our cereal. That's our meat in that our box. Yeah. <laughs> Need to sitting up here struggling and he up in here with some boxes and no shirt on and some socks. Them my broke socks. And you buying him fresh James and here we are behind on our rent and he can walk around with some Air Force Ones on. I'm, I'm finna clip him tonight. We going to party. We, we finna slain these on the street and get the electric bill money. Hello. Shoot, we help my mama. When my mama, uh, baby, come on, cut that out. Baby. But when my mama was doing her thing, working in the club, and my mama used to bring people home and clip them, she wouldn't sleep with them, she'd clip them. Shoot, we were clipping them what? We get that money. Back then, them cats used to sit up here, 